This video is an introduction to the idea of software tools. Software tools are programs which do one thing well. They are small programs which interface cleanly so that we can combine them in arbitrary ways. We try to write programs which adhere to the software tools principles. Write small programs that do one thing well. The antonym of do one thing well would be do many things poorly, and we all know programs like that. We try to write programs that do one thing well. One sub-point of this is to do a new job, build afresh, rather than complicating old programs by adding new features. For example, imagine that you are writing a word processor program. You want there to be a spell check. You want there to be a menu item the user can select that checks for misspelled words in a document. You could add this to your word processing program, complicating your word processing program, or you could write a separate spell checking program that the word processing program invokes when you choose that menu item. Next year, you're writing a web submission system. People are submitting documents over the web, and you want to flag documents that have spelling errors. If you wrote that separate program to do spell check, you can reuse it. If you built it in as part of your word processor, you cannot reuse it as easily. Another subpoint is called don't put everything into the operating system kernel. Things that are part of the operating system kernel apply to all users. Things that are in an application program apply only to users running that application program. If they like, they could run a different application program. Principle two is expect the output of every program to become the input to another as yet unknown program. Design the output of your program so that it could be easily processed by another program. Don't clutter the output with extraneous information. For example, you will notice that Unix tools do tend not to output headers. People write, say what you're asked to, no more, no less, which is a little strange way of putting it. Obviously, you're not going to say less. The main point is, no more. Write the output of your program in a simple, straightforward way that's more likely to be usable as the input to another program which might not exist yet. Principle three is make programs input formats easy to generate or type. For example, avoid binary input formats or avoid input formats where things have to be in specific column numbers. Those are easy enough for computers to generate but not easy for people to type. Your input might be coming from the standard input from a keyboard. Don't insist on interactive input. Wherever possible, programs should be able to process data from their standard input to their standard output. As opposed to, for example, operating on a file on disk. You can always do I.O. redirection to connect the standard input and output to files on disk, but if it expects to write and read files on disk, you can't do something to go the other way. One counterexample to this would be editors. Editors usually are interactive, running over a long period of time, um, and processing data that's on a disk. So not, not everything has to adhere to this, but when possible, when there's no reason why not, programs should process data from their standard input to their standard output. Another subpoint is supply good defaults. It should be common to say simply the name of the command. For example, sort. We often just say sort. The defaults are pretty good and apply to a lot of cases. Where they don't all apply, still most of them apply. So we need to say only a few options. We don't need to write a long sort line saying, yes, we want ascending order. Yes, we want alphabetical. Yes, we want to sort on the first key of the line, and so on. The defaults are good. We only have to write the options we want to change. If every file has the same format, users only need one set of tools. If the format
format is simple, the tools are easy to write. The format is plain text files with one record per line. Almost all Unix tools process files in this format. If everything in the system is a file, users can go further with one set of tools. The extreme of this is device files, in which the interface to a operating system module representing hardware is represented as a node in the file system, which you can use the file name as parameters to command line tools. Don't force people to use the system in one way. In addition to just general flexibility and accommodating user preference, a program is very limited unless it can be used in ways the author didn't imagine. We want to write programs which are fundamental and general and can be used in many circumstances as a general tool. There's a fourth principle called Use Programs to Write Programs, which I should mention briefly as well. Use high-level languages, not just general purpose programming languages, also high-level descriptions in the parameters to commands or in programs configuration files, which are little languages of their own. Use regular expressions for all pattern matching. If you have a search operation, use the regular expression library to allow the user to specify a regular expression as the search, not just an exact literal string. Not all of these principles are always embodied very fully in Unix, but most of them are, and it's an ideal which we strive for in writing software tools.